to you a little bit about the uh, quarterback dynamic now with uh, Brennan coming into the mix. Just how do you see that unfolding this spring in terms of the competition at quarterback? Well, I can't tell you how it's going to unfold. I mean, that's why we're practicing. But the quarterback position is the same as every position on the team. There's competition there. And excited, you know, that we've been able to add an experienced player that has, you know, the background uh, in our offense that Brennan has. But, you know, every position deserves competition. I think that's what brings out the best in these guys. And, and as you know, and as we saw last year, it's not just about who wins the starting job. It's about the development of everybody because any of them could end up being our starter at any point in time. And this could go on for a while, you know, referring to the quarterback job or any others. Uh, and I told the team this, the spring is a chance for us to grow, learn, get better. Um, it positions you uh, to be a starter going into fall camp, not going into the first game. And, and so there's a long time ahead of this thing. And, I look forward to all the guys on the team competing this spring. Gibby? Yeah, Dave, you lost some really good uh, linebackers, so some and some generational linebackers, but you've got some guys coming back that have, that have waited their turn, have bided their time, and that's kind of unusual in this day and age in college football. Uh, how proud are you of those guys for, for sticking around and, and now here their chance is to, 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 to shine this year? Yeah, no, you're right. You know, it's uh, losing Drake and Isaiah, uh, two guys that have played a ton of football. You know, um, Devon Betty has is, is waited his time I'm behind Zay. He's been a really good teammate. Jalen Scott, same thing. Um, but behind them, I know there's competition for these spots. You know, it's nothing's going to be handed to them either. It's, it's no different than the quarterback position. And, you know, Caden Fordham and Jordan Poole uh, are two guys that look really good in the off season program. And I'm excited to see them. Uh, Jalen Parker, another young man that's really changed his body and they've been here now two years, uh, helped us on special teams. Uh, and, and so it'll be exciting, you know, at that position group uh, competitively. And, you know, again, it's going to take some time. You need to get these guys into a lot of reps so that you can see, you know, where they're at, but you're right about guys not waiting around anymore it's been unique here in a couple different last year jordan houston was that guy that waited his turn behind bam and ricky you know and and so it's it's unique i think it speaks to the culture of our program that guys are willing to do that and continue to develop and grow and find other ways to help us win until it's their their time and you know this off season's been fun you know to see those guys step up and have a bigger voice you know with the absence of drake and isaiah's David. Hey, Dave. Um, I wanted to ask you a little bit about Zach Myers. Uh, I know you guys, you know, were one of the first to really find him and recruit him. Um, you know, what was it about him that you felt fit so well with your program from a mentality wise? And, and what is it about just kind of his personality that that you were so drawn to? You know, Christ School has been good to us now. Uh, Aiden White obviously came to us from there. And so, um, once you get someone from any program, uh, it leads you into not a pipeline, but just a little bit more info, you know, on the upcoming players and found out about Zach. Um, he's a, a guy that plays both sides of the ball, had offers on both sides of the ball, very versatile athlete, can play multiple spots in the secondary, has really good ball skills, um, catching the ball on offense, you know, has the body type, the measurables that we look for. You know, as you got into it, started, you know, getting to know him, just really outgoing personality, caring human being, hardworking, competitive guy, you know, multi-sport athlete as well, and uh, really good family. You know, you know his family story, David. I've, I've been told you're doing a story on that, so I'll let you do that. But, you know, it just fit all the things we were looking for, and, and we had to work hard to get him. You know, I mean, he was a guy that ended up being a, um, a recruit that had a lot of options. Matt? Yeah, Coach, you got two new coaches on the offensive staff, and you, and you moved a couple coaches to new position groups. Just, just how has that gone so far, and how has that transition been? Yeah, it's been great. You know, I think uh, Coach and I, exactly what I expected him to be, very creative, unique, 
Um, you can see why he's a tough guy to coach against. You know, he knows his system. He also is open to learning things and, and evolving and getting to know his players and spends a lot of time watching them, you know, studying them on film. Uh, coach 2 J's brought great energy to the O-line. You know, uh, Coach Garrison did a great job here. And and so he walked into a room that, you know, loved their former coach. And, and I think he's done a, a really good job of building his own relationships and, and teaching them new things and adding to their repertoire, giving them new tools. I'm excited to see those guys this spring coach, you know, uh, in action. Uh, and, and so Coach Goble and Coach Roper moved to other spots. I've seen Coach Roper in a quarterback room prior, and, and that's been most of his career. And so it brings a lot of experience as a teacher to that room. Uh, and then Coach Coach Goebel's coached everything but O-line. Uh, if you look at his resume, you'll see that he's coached about everywhere. And, and being on special teams, he's got really good relationships already with our running backs. You know, he's coached those guys in that area for their entire career. So he'll bring a lot of toughness to that group. I know that he'll be demanding. I'm excited to see what he can do, you know, to help those guys continue to grow. Uh, he's a really good motivator. And, and so... Time will tell, but you know all the signs are pointing in, in a good direction here, and the unity of that that staff has been excellent. JC, you know a lot of a lot of attention sometimes goes with transfers and recruits, but do you look at it as Peyton hey, Wilson might be your biggest offseason recruit? <laughs> yeah, I mean, anytime you get a guy back that has that kind of experience on your team. And we had a bunch of those last year, as you know, it, it means a lot. And, and Peyton's grown up so much as a person and a leader. I'm so proud of him and excited for him. He's in a great headspace. He's doing a really good job just being himself, but also stepping out of his comfort zone a little bit and using his voice more. And um, he, I would have told you four years ago, it's probably his biggest fear is public speaking. You know, just seeing him now get in front of the team and talk when he needs to. He's done a great job with that. And so very proud of him, excited for the program to have someone of his caliber back and, you know, praying that he's going to have the type of year that he wanted to have as his final season. James? Yeah, Dave, um, I joined a little late, so you may have already answered this, but you've had some turnover in the wide receiver room, uh, graduation, transfer. Just how excited are you to see some of those younger guys this spring? Yeah, yeah, it's it's definitely a group that's worked hard. Uh, they know they have an opportunity. Keon's really the biggest guy back from a playing time standpoint, you know, and, and uh, so there's a ton of people in that room that are going to be competing to get the ball, you know, and uh, excited to see how that evolves. And then there's some new faces coming in too, you know, with Dakari Collins transferring in. Um, you see Javante Vereen uh, here as an early grad. Um, KC Conception you know, here as an early grad. So there's a lot of competition for the football and the receiver H-back tight end rooms. And uh, because of what we lost there, I think you're going to see some new faces, obviously, and some guys in some new roles. And then you have some guys that have played a little bit that are trying to play a lot. You know, you've got Anthony Smith, uh, Josh Crabtree, um, Julian Gray, you know, guys that have been here uh, that are Porter Rooks. Um, Porter probably being the most experienced guy that wasn't a starter. Those guys, you know, trying to now step onto the platform as the guy. And so this brings a, a really important time for these guys, you know, to get out there and showcase what they can do and, and compete. And I wanted to ask you about um, Robert Kennedy. You added him from Old Dominion. What appealed to you uh, with him in the transfer portal? Well, we needed to find an older player um, or two in the back end. We lost a lot. You know, in the secondary, we lost four of our five starters. And uh, even though there's guys back that started a lot of games, you know, the, the depth went from having, you know, two guys that could be starters to one guy that's been a starter. And, and so we wanted to add with Tyler Baker Williams' departure to graduation, uh, another guy that could compete in that nickel room that was older. Um, felt like that would help that room a lot. You know, Jakeen Harris is back and Devin Boykin is back, guys that have started at safety and nickel. Um, so just getting one more older player in there to compete with the younger guys that, that we have, we thought was really important. He's a guy that's played a lot of football. He's really impressive on film. You know, physical guy that can run, cover, blitz, tackle, does all the things that we were looking for. 
Thanks, Dave. You bet. Giving. Yeah, Dave, obviously you've got a good team coming back, but the outside expectations that you had last year probably won't be the same this year. Is that is that going to be nice for you guys to, to maybe fly a little bit under the, the radar possibly this year? Yeah, I mean, I think just the line of questioning will be a lot different. You know, I, I don't know. I, mean, I liked the position we were in last year too. You know, I think we, we had a lot of good players that had earned that, and that was where we were at. This, this year's team's got more to prove probably because of the lack of returning starters. Um, which maybe puts a bigger chip on our shoulder and, and we do, you know, fare well in that kind of uh, landscape, I think. But, you know, this is a team that wants to prove themselves no different than last year's team. I think last year we knew we were up against expectations uh, and, and and probably complacency. You know, this year we've, we've got to outkick kind of where people are putting us, you know, and I think that's what's fun about this is just getting a chance to go out there and compete and prove who we are. Does it, does it change how you, how you guys coach any in any way? Not really how we coach. It definitely changes the conversations. I mean, you're you're going to be talking about different things. You know, we, we don't have 21 starters back. You know, so we're talking about a lot of different things in that room. And, and in our case, we got 40 some new faces by the time we start in August. You know, we're talking about a lot of different things than last year when it comes to just the team chemistry and getting this thing to gel. And one final question, Dave, you had some great leaders last year. Who, who might uh, step up and be one of your mo more vocal leaders this year? Well, that's what we're excited to see. You know, I, I think the offseason program guys stepped up. Peyton's obviously going to be one of them. Um, you know, Dylan McMahon, guy that played a lot of football for us. Tim McKay's played a lot of football for us. You know, those are, are guys. Uh, Keon Lassane, you know, played a lot of football, receiver. You know, um, Jakeen Harris and Devin Boykin in, in the secondary, Shy Battle in the secondary. You know, some guys with returning experience. And then there's guys that are, by the end of the spring may earn jobs that have a voice on our team. And, and Betty being one of those guys has got a, a big voice, you know, but he's got to win that job to have that voice carry the way he wants it to. And so, you know, we got to let competition and time play out a little bit before we know the complete answer to that question. James? Yeah, Dave, you mentioned uh, Dylan McMahon. Um, obviously, you've had him at the center now a couple a couple games, and, and you've had success at that position. How do you view him long-term at that position? Well, you know, I think we recruited him to be our center, and, and uh, because of, you know, Gibby, he ended up being our guard. And uh, with Gibby's departure, uh, Grant Gibson, I'm talking about, you know, uh, Dylan now is inserted into the spot. We recruited him to play as a natural center. He's very good at that position. Um, I think he's in a perfect position right now to, to lead the offense, being a guy with experience, kind of like Bradbury played guard. And then when Joe Selfo left, Garrett slid inside and became you know, a Remington Award winner over time. Would love to see Dylan in that same mold. You know, it's going to be his to prove now. Um, but we're excited, you know, to have a player of his caliber at center, of his athleticism and and the fact that he played it through high school, you know, he's a natural at that position. It's not something sometimes you're trying to train a guy to play it that's never done it, and that takes a little more time. Chip. Yeah, Coach, we've had a, we've had a chance, obviously, to be around MJ and Ben Finley uh, in these last years, and kind of got to know them a little bit, but don't know a lot about Brennan. And can you tell us a little bit about the – the young man you've gotten to know and, and just what you, you know, your thoughts about him. Well, it's a great room. You know, I think Ben and MJ, great personalities, great team guys, uh, fun watching them grow up over the last 12 months, both of them and excited about the way that they're carrying themselves and, and, and look forward to watching them both this spring and in the future. You know, Brennan's a, a competitor. He's, he's tough, small town guy, very blue collar, hardworking, ultra competitive, you know, and the, and the team runs, uh, all these competitions we do. He thrived. He loves to compete. You see that. He, he's quiet in how he goes about his business, but he's not quiet in how he works. He's a really hardworking guy that's got, you know, a very consistent way about himself. He's the same every day is what we've seen. Just ultra competitive, treats people with respect. You know, I think he's quiet in how he talks to people, but he's, he's earned the respect of the guys around him already. Um, it's fun having someone that knows the offense, you know, as a player, because he's been very helpful, you know, going around with the other players. You can see he likes to serve others that way. Uh, 